Flectere si necuo superos, ancherosa movebo. If I can change the will of heaven, I will move hell. Alas, the curtain rises and the veil is lifted. The story of the absurd hero is starting now. Can she find and save the hermit from suffocating solitude? She too was a hermit, but one in solitude no more. Seeing a friend in danger, she follows covered up footsteps. Can she reach her destination? There is no doubt that the Hermit set has to be one of the Project Sekai fandom's favorite card sets. From its gorgeous card art to all of the analysis threads of it on Twitter, it does deserve that spot. With this video hopefully on time for the Maya Footsteps Your Destination event, I have been in the mood to look at these cards. Today, I would like to present my own takes, Mizuki's and Anna's cards. I will be looking at both of their cards, of course. But before that, we need to understand the Hermit Tarot card itself. The Major Arcana depicts the journey to enlightenment, and the Hermit is the ninth trump in the deck. Hermit is seen with the Lamp of Truth in one hand, and a staff in another. He also wears a cloak for discretion. The Lamp of Truth is used to guide the unknowing, and the staff helps him navigate the narrow paths in the mountains, as this wandering path is a long and rocky one. The Hermit upright symbolizes introspection and self-reflection, whereas it reverse represents exile, loneliness, and sadness. Mizuki's card is aptly named Hermit Reverse, as they fit the Hermit card to a T. The loneliness that Mizuki feels embodies the meaning of the card reversed. Anna is called the Hermit Searcher because they're in search of Mizuki's true self. But that also raises the question, why is Anna a Hermit as well? Anna's card is upright and, going back to the upright position's meaning, it also perfectly fits Anna after an event of pale insatiable color. If you are curious to why is that so, here's a 10 minutes video on that. I'll then talk about Mizuki's cards first, as it is their focus event after all. Mizuki is seen with horns on their head, one of them being broken. They are seen walking away from all vegetation and life onto the desolate snow. The Lamp of Truth has been put out. By whom? Who knows? The borders of the card are adorned by a frame with lockets on each end. A shade is seen on one side and a tangled ribbon on the other. Flowers that resemble foxgloves are placed on the leftover corners of the card. A locket is also seen on their outfit with ribbons tied around their waist as well. I haven't seen people point this out, and this idea is courtesy of Kizu, my partner in crime. But have you ever wondered why Mizuki's horns look different? Or why are they broken? This may be the reference to the chromosomes XX and XY. If you see it, well, now you can't unsee it. The horns being broken may also represent their conflict with their assigned gender. Although I couldn't find any animal to match Mizuki's horns, which is unfortunate. However, goats and some sheep have different horn shapes based on their gender as well, which I think is something to note. Another thing that is interesting is that Mizuki likes to hide their neck in their trained cards, and in this card they do the same. This might be them hiding their Adam's apple, which the more you see it, the more you can't unsee it. The Lamp of Truth isn't lit, suggesting that Mizuki is lost on whether they should give out their secret or not. It can also mean that they don't want to tell Nigo about their truth yet. Seen with the locket motif as well. The tangled ribbon represents their feelings and struggles. They can't be untangled alone. Mizuki needs a light to help guide them. Mizuki's style of guidance symbolizes their nature of seeking to help others, especially shown in the Carnation Recollection event. The fox glove can symbolize insincerity, insecurity, but also creativity and energy. To give someone fox gloves carries the meaning of I am vicious for you, rather than myself. This meaning fits what Mizuki is doing for the rest of Nigo, in a way that Nigo is what keeps Mizuki going, but Mizuki themselves is neglecting their own problems. The reason why I think the event is called My Footsteps to Your Destination can be found in the landscape of the two hermit cards. The snow covers up their footsteps, showing how they don't want to be hurt by those they care about. Mizuki's pain is silent and suffocating like the snow. They isolate themselves from Nigo, becoming a literal hermit. However, there is no snow to cover the footsteps up in the forest, one of which Enna is following to find the true Mizuki. Speaking of Enna, Enna is seen holding a lit up lamp of truth and holding the staff of guidance while she traverses through the snow from the forest with her steps leaving footprints. She looks like she is searching for something, no, a certain someone, with a concerned look on her face. Unlike in Mizuki's cards, there is no lock on Anna's outfit and card border. As Mizuki's card is reversed, Anna has geraniums on the opposite corners of her card alongside a less tangled up ribbon. 
Anna's horns are similar to that of an ewe's horns. The lamp being lit shows Anna's intent on finding the real Mizuki, but her facial expression looks like she doesn't know where to start looking. It can also symbolize Anna having found herself after pale and sayishable color. Her feelings, while more resolute and less tangled than Mizuki's, are still not completely sorted out, signaling her further development in on this blank canvas I paint. Geraniums represent happiness, good health, and friendship. Anna wishes for her friendship with Mizuki to be healthy and wants to know the real Mizuki too, which is why I think these flowers fit so well. If I can't change the will of heaven, I will move hell. This quote that I put in the beginning, I feel represents Anna's determination and stubbornness to be by Mizuki's side. She's like an absurd hero, doing what may seem like an impossible task, but she still does it anyways. When she saw Mizuki's sad expression in secret distance, she said it so that she would help Mizuki no matter what. Her persistence may seem ridiculous, but no matter how hard or rocky this hermit searcher's path may be, Anna will still continue on against the will of the heavens. Anna has always been this absurd hero. Despite being told that she has no talents in art by her own artist father, she continues to paint. She keeps pushing on, never knowing when to give up and that is very admirable. This video isn't over yet. We can't forget the untrained cards, of course, in the card analysis. The untrained cards on Mizuki's and Anna's are complete opposites. Mizuki is drenched in desaturated grays and blues, while Anna is masked in the warm sunlight. Mizuki is avoiding looking at you, signifying that they are running away from their problems, whereas Anna wants to help Mizuki head on. Mizuki looks like they broke their facade as in the mirror. We see them with their distressed expression, and mirrors can be symbols of illusions. With this illusion shattered in front of no one except themselves, it makes them feel even lonelier than before. Every story has to have a beginning. In this epic tale, we first have to start with the hermit. In the Kamiyama Fest card, they seem to be surrounded by people, yet oddly there is a lack of warmth. Mizuki wears a sad smile on their face, as even though they are surrounded by friends, the pain of being hurt by those they love binds them to this pain. We move on to Secret Distance, where the ribbons start to unravel, and Anna gets a small peek at Mizuki's true feelings. Anna in the Secret Distance card is seen peeking through a shadowy room. These are my interpretation, Mizuki's feelings. Something locked away yet adored with all things cute as a distraction from the fame. Because why be sad and lonely when you can just run and look away? Mizuki's secret distance card, on the other hand, is far away from you. They're personally distancing you away so that they don't get hurt. They want to fade into the pink and dissolve into all things that are cute. And we resume to the present, the search for the hermit. As feelings blend together in song and those who seek to lower their eyes, it's time to look at the envy of lower. Anna's card of course is upright and Mizuki's card is upside down as already established. The waxing crescent is Mizuki's moon which symbolizes surrender and the other half which is Anna's waning gibbous represents refinement. To be complete, Mizuki would have to surrender their secret to Anna and with the power of retrospect, Anna goes back to art lessons as a form of refinement on in this bank canvas I paint. As the hero's journey continues, Anna tries to reach out her hand to Mizuki but they look away. At the split center of the NV lies a throne, to sit on one you need power. Since none of Migo sit on it, with Meiko being the one on the throne instead, they still will have their doubts and issues to resolve. In a narrower lens, this may mean that Mizuki doesn't have the power to tell Anna their secret, hence the lack of power separating them both. At the end of the MV, Mizuki is seen with the throne alone, but much further from it this time. Is this how they feel without Migo, or is this how far they are? Uh, from telling Anna their secret. To wrap this up, hermit cards are packed with symbolism and meaning, but it's no wonder that they are so popular. Savior and the saved, hero and the journey, so on and so forth. For those on EN, good luck with your polls. Thank you for watching this video. We have a Discord where you can come and discuss. If you want more Project Sekai content, here's a video about my story with Mahuyu. I hope you have a good day.